Hey, what's up guys? It's Phil and today we're looking at Lightwave 3D. Just a little quick tour. Uh, this is Lightwave 3D version 2015.3, the Windows 64 version. So if you don't know Lightwave, it goes all the way back over 20 years it's been around. Uh, going all the way back to uh, Jurassic Park and Star Trek 6 it was used on. And it's been used in movies and games and really used a lot in television uh, since then. And so let's take a quick look. So if you don't know, it's made of two programs. It's Modeler and Layout. And Modeler is where you actually create all of your models. And then Layout is where you set up the scenes and do the animation and your lighting and cameras and all that stuff. So we're just gonna look at Modeler today. And first, so across the top we have a number of tabs and as we can see they're basically categories and uh, you can see as you click them it basically changes the tools listed along the left side and so this is just the very very basic interface uh, with the exception of a user tab which I added myself which I use to put all of the uh, basic tools that I use most Okay, so let's uh, create a little box here. So I'm going to click the box tool under the create tab and I'm just going to use the left mouse button to drag it out. Uh, this is the top viewport so we're looking down at it from above and then on the back viewport I'm just going to drag up and we can of course drag down as well and then we can see in the perspective viewport here it is as well and we can just drag in the corner here we have the pan, rotate, and zoom buttons and every viewport has those and then we also have the options to show what we're looking at here so perspective or top or back we'll keep this one a perspective and then next to that we have a when we have a menu for picking how it looks the wireframes or color wireframes or sketch mode etc so i like to keep this one at textured wire a lot of the time and so we've created our box and we can just press space to drop the tool and now our box is permanently here and there's a few other things you might like to use here and uh, that's the numeric panel if you press the N key you'll get that and what that does is give you options for every tool you're using pretty much so let's draw out another box and we can see right off the bat here we have the width height the depth and the location of it in world space and the axis that we're drawing it on is currently Y, it's up and down. And a few other options down here. And as we drag it up, we can see the center of it is changing. And I know a lot of people like to keep this window open because like I said, you're gonna use it on almost every tool. So I like to drag it off to the side here. And then I'll take this side and pull it over. Okay, and then another couple of them you might like is if you press F7, you'll get the Layers panel. And so if you're going to create objects, you might be working on one object and you don't want to change any of the other objects that you had worked on before. So in the Layers panel, we can select another layer and we can see the checkbox here showing that's the one visible and then if we click the checkbox next to that for the first layer you can see they show up as a black wireframe which means that we can't do anything to those you can't touch them at all and so I like to take this one and place it over here right above there let's hide that the background and you can also see the layers panel up here is a much simpler version 
where the upper left of the rectangle is highlighted. So we'll highlight that one. And then the lower corner is in the background. So another thing you might like to have up is the statistics panel. And so we'll press W and get that up. And so this is currently showing edge st statistics. Uh, and that's because we're in working in edge mode. Now if I press spacebar, I can toggle to polygon mode and it'll show polygon information. And if I press spacebar again, it'll show points. And then it'll just keep on toggling as I press space. So if I go back to the first layer here, you can see we have currently 24 polygons uh, with edges connected to them. So if I press space here, we can see we have 12 polygons or faces total. And if we're in points mode, we can see there are currently 16 points. And so if I select some of those, we can see it becomes highlighted, meaning some of them are selected. And down in the corner here, it'll show currently two are selected. So what if I want to easily select everything? I can just select, click this plus button, and it'll select all of the points that are connected to three polygons, which is currently everything. Uh, the same thing would happen if I clicked the total, so that'll be everything. Now we got all the points. And if I want to deselect them, I can just cl click along the top bar of any area, or click on the side here, and they get deselected. You can also press the slash key, the forward slash key that is uh, near your question mark. So if I select some here and then press slash, it deselects. I'm going to take my statistics window and place it up here. And I think this is a good spot to have everything. This is how I normally like to have it laid out. And so the great thing about placing these windows here is if you close LightWave and then reopen it, they open up right where you left them. So anyway, moving forward, let's come down here. We have our weight maps. Here we have T for some textures. We have M for morphs, C for uh, color selections, and S for selection sets. These aren't things you need to worry about right away when you're first starting, but it's good to know that they're down here. Then, of course, down along the bottom, we have undo and redo. Uh, like I said, the slash key for drop selection, and drop tool, which is the space bar. Oops can't use it because it's nothing selected. Uh, change surface name, which is the Q icon. That's the same thing here. And down here we have different types of subpatch, either the standard subpatch mode or Catmull Clark. Uh, we can turn symmetry on and off. And then down here we have the action centers. These will change where everything happens from, say if you're rotating things, uh, like if I select this whole box up here, and we'll deselect that edge. So if I'm in mouse mode and I want to rotate by pressing the Y key, it'll rotate based on where the mouse is. If I'm in selection mode, it'll rotate based on the center of the selection. If I'm in pivot action center, it'll rotate based on the pivot point, which is at 0, 0, 0 by default, right in the middle of this plus. And then if I want to rotate along the origin, that is also 0, 0, 0. Okay, so that is a quick look at the interface for uh, LightWave 3D version 2015.3. If you found this video useful, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment below if you have any questions. And I'll talk to you next time.